Today, we are travelling to Birmingham to meet a couple who have kindly offered to let us ride their amazing homemade electric bikes. Paul and Bex have quite literally put these together in their shed with some old laptop batteries and some bits off eBay. But they have produced amazing results. So yeah, the inspiration for building these things came off the back of a trip to uh, Cannock Chase Trail Centre where I got burned off uphill by a couple of chaps on their hired electric bikes. I thought it'd be good fun to see whether it be possible to make something a lot cheaper than those off-the-shelf products for, uh, but with a lot more fun. So the off-the-shelf bikes start at about 4,000 for a decent mountain bike and go up towards the sort of 6,000 mark. I think the Canic Chase higher centre ones were about 4,500. There's a lot of money for a bike. This thing has come in a little bit closer to 1,300 pounds and is a good bit more powerful as well. The legal bikes are all limited to 250 watts, so that includes the expensive stuff. Um, this thing pulls about 2.4 kilowatt, um, and the bike you're riding about 1500 watts. So that sort of power is enough to get this to uh, about 37 miles an hour, about 60 kilometers an hour, and the bike you're riding about 50 kilometers an hour. And in terms of range, uh, both the batteries on these two bikes roughly the same capacity about sort of 850 watt hours um, the battery pack on this is a homemade pack out of laptop batteries uh, loads of laptop batteries stripped apart tested and assembled into a 52 volt pack with somewhere around 15 amp hour um, and the range that will give me is around 35 miles on this bike a little bit further on the one you're riding so in terms of legality uh, the the officially sanctioned electric bikes limited to 250 watts and no assistance above 15 miles an hour, 29 kilometers an hour. These things, because of their speed, their lack of pedal assistance are not strictly legal uh, for use on the roads, but obviously we can use them off-road and use them for a lot of exploring that we can't do with things like motorbikes. But in terms of charging these things, um, they charge off something that looks a bit like a laptop power pack. Uh, so you can carry it around with you, plugs into a wall socket. It does take about seven hours to charge from empty. Um, but we're talking about 12 pence to recharge from flat for your 35 miles range. So in terms of pence per mile, that's, that's pretty cheap really. So my journey to work and back is about 12 miles each way. Uh, so we're talking 24 miles, two thirds of a pack. It's about sort of 7p. It's pretty cheap in terms of transport. And it takes me 35 minutes on this or 25 minutes in the car. Particularly when you consider the traffic that you get in typical commuting, like any two wheel vehicle. You've got loads of advantages. In terms of, on these machines, in terms of pedaling, um, you're only adding a small percentage of the power you're likely to be using at the, the enhanced speed these things travel at. So the difference in, in uh, consumption is something like 18 watt hour per mile if you're not pedaling, 16 and a half if you are pedaling. So it's, you save a little bit, but not a lot. Um, obviously, in, in terms of the off the shelf e bikes where you've only got 250 watt of assistance, you're likely to be putting in 200. So if you pedal a lot, you, you might halve your consumption rates. In, in brief then, talk us through what okay. exactly is this all about? So we've got a, a, a home-built electric bike. Okay. Um, we were looking for something with a bit more power than, than some of the off-the-shelf sort of you know, legal boring stuff that, okay, that's, yeah. that's available out there. So took a, a brand new frame from a British manufacturer that was on nice and cheap on Very special good. offer, British, like end that. of life, <laughs> yeah. And sort of, uh, sort of a mix of componentry and then paired it with uh, a motor from Cyclone Bikes in Taiwan. So I okay. bought straight from the manufacturer. It's a three kilowatt motor. It comes with uh, a kit including the motor, the controller, the, uh, uh, the special chain set, which okay. has uh, the free wheeling chain set, free wheeling motor, free wheeling cassette at the back. Okay. And that allows all the parts to operate independently. Yep. Um, so you can pedal it as a bike, 
or you can motor it along without your feet whizzing around on the pedals okay. uh, and it's entirely independent the, for, for me looking at that because yeah. of where the motor is yeah. I think that the sprocket was going to turn constantly absolutely riding, yeah. but, uh, so that's, that, the, that's the purpose of the free wheels okay, yeah. the, the advantage of these mid-mounted mid, mid-drive yep. motor setups are that you're driving the rear wheel through the gears of the bike Okay, so excellent. you've got access to all of the gears that you had originally yep. in this case so we've got two, you know, choice of two, two at the front and uh, and it's a 10 speed sprocket at the back Okay. so we've got 20 gears available to us so in, in low gears at the front mm-hmm. we can climb anything it's, oh, got, it's got more than enough power it will take you off road up absolutely anything anything you could get you know could, could we work this out in a kind of a horsepower kind of way um, well the yeah the, the motor the motor pulls at the moment about 2.4 kilowatt 2,400 okay. watts yes off 52 that's volt a lot isn't battery. it absolutely yeah, 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 so yeah. and that's uh, roughly you have to do the maths but it's, it's something yeah. around 3 horsepower ok well so, that's so, you know 2.5 3 horsepower that's quite quite so powerful, you, yeah you're getting towards the sort of power you see out of small mopeds that sort of thing yeah and obviously if an average person puts maybe a couple of hundred watts peak into the pedals if they're really going for it yeah we're talking 10 times that amount of power yeah a kilowatt is a huge amount yeah, of, uh, absolutely. of energy absolutely and, and and the wind resistance on these things isn't isn't no, great cycles no. in general most of the energy you're putting in when you pedal isn't, isn't yeah. to get it rolling it's yeah to, yeah to definitely. combat the wind against you so and the faster you go obviously the higher speeds you can reach on these things yeah the power requirements go up significantly so in terms of time where uh, from start to finish what are we looking at uh in, in terms of actually building the, yes the, the bike yeah uh, it, it took no more than a couple of weeks to put together and you obviously you spend a bit that of time quick. yeah absolutely you spend a bit of time um you know ordering bits and bobs but in terms of actually throwing the stuff on the bike sorting the wiring out you spend a few evenings tidying the wiring up so it doesn't look like a typical rat's nest <laughs> um yeah. And, and trying to make it look neat. I think that's one of the problems with a lot of homemade yeah. kit, and especially homemade e-bikes. There can be. I, I, have, to, I have to say, when a proper mix of when we found out about it, we were expecting yeah. something rather Heath Robinson. It looks like something you could potentially buy off the shelf. Absolutely. I mean, the, the drivetrain is not quite as neat as the properly packaged. You know, that's a Jubilee clip systems. on there. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Quite. <laughs> but it's um, it, it's sort of functional and it, it works well enough for for what it is. Yeah. Well, I know that Kate's dying to get out on it. Yeah. So can we take Brilliant. it for a spin? Of course you can. Appreciate that. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I spent a few minutes familiarising myself with the controls and based on the fact that I'm a chicken I went for the least powerful of the two bikes but this was more than powerful enough for me. I spent 15 minutes getting used to it in a local park before braving the roads. This is my first opportunity to try out this electric bike and I have to say, it's pretty insane. On this bike you've got a thumb throttle on the right hand side and a gear lever to the left. And all you have to do is put your your thumb on that really gently and it is fast. The power, this, um, the bike weighs about 20 kilograms, which is heavier than a normal push bike. So you'd expect it to feel quite heavy. But when you put your foot on that, your foot, your thumb on that throttle, you wouldn't even know it weighed any more than a normal push bike. The top speed that I've done so far, which is 30 miles an hour, you can still control it really easily. As I'm just breathing! Ah! (laughs) This is amazing! We need these in our lives! Absolutely need these in our lives! (laughs) About a year ago, you might remember that we cycled around Lake Annecy, which is 25 miles, on electric bikes. And it was a long way, and it took us a long time, and we had sore bottoms, and I would much prefer to be doing it on one of these. I probably would change a seat, just because it's not the most comfortable for me. But if I could change the seat, I would ride this bike 10 miles to and from work every single day. Electric bikes are great, but this is in a league of its own. It's absolutely amazing. You don't even have to pedal if you don't want to. The bike I'm riding has been converted for about 200 quid, which is an absolute bargain. I mean, why wouldn't you have one? Or two? For legal reasons, both these bikes have a speed limit of 24 kilometres per hour. But if you want to go on some off-road action, have a bit of fun, that can easily be overridden. Forty-five minutes later, we decided that we will have to have at least one of these in our garage. Electric bikes really do make sense. There is no tax, insurance or MOT, and they are fun to ride. And congestion, that's a thing of the past. 
If you are interested in the most capable electric bike I've ever seen, it might be worth speaking to Paul. Sadly, I had to give the bike back, but we were very grateful to Paul and Bex for wasting their Saturday. My top speed for the day? 43 miles per hour, on a bike that only does 30, off-road of course.